Because I, like my knee was, you know, it was, it was broken, it was, it was fucked up bad, and it's Wednesday of Hell Week, and all the boat crews are past the surf zone, and I just got a, a Toradol shot in my knee, because I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm, let's go, man, we're going. And um, it's fucking like, it's real late at night, and it was fucking raining, and the, the, the class is past the surf zone, and I'm still not a big fan of the fucking water. The ocean is very unforgiving. And I had this big life jacket on, and, and SBG's like, hey, follow me, man. Should we run a mile down to where the boat crews are at out past the surf zone? I'm, I'm thinking, hey, we can wait for them to come on in. He goes, hey, man, get a Kim light. You broke a Kim light? Put on my hat and said, go out and fucking get them. And I was on my own. There was no, like, there was no, like, swim buddy so I, so I can buzz you for swim buddy. And when he said that to me, I said, are you, in my mind, I said, this motherfucker is joking. He's got to be joking, man. That's what it was, but we, but we're now we're we're you know we're we're pretty tight now, and he said no, that wasn't it at all. He said you're one of the only people in my tenure at, as a as a buds instructor that I've ever done that with. He said I knew a person like you would have found that as a challenge, and I had to dig deep because I didn't want to look at him and say hey man I'm not doing that shit, even though I think I could have because there was no swim buddy. Yeah. You know you don't go out there Wednesday night after like. 80 hours of hell week and you're like seeing stars and shit that like i'm like i'm like during the daytime you're seeing boats that aren't out there i mean you're hallucinating you're all over the place he sent me out there and i was like okay this is my time to show one of the baddest motherfuckers in the world that it's on it was a moment that i started realizing i'm starting to separate myself when you grow up weak and you start to master your mind because my whole thing is whenever i'm Whenever I'm weak at something, whenever I'm scared of something, I master it. I was a weak, mind, you know, a weak-minded person, so I mastered my mind. And in mastering my mind, I mastered the human mind. And I realized why I no longer judge people, why I no longer put people on a pedestal, because we're all fucked up in our own way. We all have demons. Some people hide them better than other people. So I know we all have them. But me knowing that, I know the most alpha males are very fragile, very fragile. They never want to see another person harder than them. Ego will fuck you up every time. Ego is serious. So if I can hurt your ego, I got you. So by me having such a fragile ego growing up, all this was my advantage. I was doing a live autopsy on how fucked up I was. I was like, hey, this fucks me up. I better fuck other people up too. So I started using all these different tools and tactics to get in instructors' heads. And the taking souls, that's where it happened, man. We were, we were Wednesday, freezing, cold everybody's jackhammer and everybody's everybody wants to you know everybody's just want to get through it now and the instructors take great pride in watching you suffer they do we you know in a in a sick way it's, it's it's kind of funny you know you know you were there once as a as a student now you're an instructor but i knew how would i be thinking if i was an instructor but what would i what wouldn't i like to see I would hate to see some guys just looking like this is just another fucking day on the beach and go f yourself yeah. everybody's hard so i say you know what man it's time you all i can't fight you that's your job and i love your job i love what you guys are doing you guys are making us better but now i'm going to take the tactical advantage and i'm going to start fucking with you so i got my boat crew bill brown i had chris kyle on my boat crew i had a couple of hardcore motherfuckers and everybody right now is kind of like in their own world let's just get through this man i can't wait till friday so we can graduate how we can get going i said let's go ahead and have some fun so the evolution here was we just got through with med check. You know, we're stripped down to nothing and they're checking us out, making sure we're good, to, you know, checking for pneumonia, checking for fucked up knees. My knees all jacked up, but they're giving me shots and shit. And I was like the boat crew leader of boat crew two. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the front of the boat and I tell our guys, this is what we're gonna do. The boat was like on our heads. That's all it was. We're supposed to lift the boats up above our head. That's all you gotta do. But when you're this weak, you're this fragile, you're this tired, the boat's heavy. So there's a thing you can do when you do boat presses. You can get the boat and like just toss it up. Toss it up and catch it. And that shows like you're jacked up. So everybody's holding the boat and they're shaking and the boat's starting to come down their head and all the boat crews are all lined up and they're fucked up. And I'm looking at that and I turn around my boat and I say, hey guys, it's time to fucking take some souls. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? I said, we're gonna get, I go, you see all these fucking instructors out here all in their fucking jackets and drinking coffee and laughing and smiling and shit. I want their fucking faces to go straight up fucking numb. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna start boat pressing this motherfucker. Just take my lead, trust me, you'll get energy from it. 
We start throwing this boat up in the fucking air, catching it, throwing it up and catching it. We start yelling, <laughs> can't her fucking boat crew too? We're yelling our fucking ass off and we're doing it. And they make a stop, like, like, like what the fuck, like the stop. I look at these instructors and their faces, they were thinking about themselves. Like, what the fuck just happened, man? I know me on Wednesday, I couldn't have done that. How are they doing it? Well, what you want to do is face the dragon and get the damn gold. That's what you want to do. Well, you have to be a paradoxical being even to do that. So, you know, in, in The Hobbit, for example, when, what's his name? Frodo, right? Isn't, it's not, or it's Bilbo. It's Bilbo in The Hobbit. You know, he's kind of this little underdeveloped, overprotected shire dweller. And he's called on a great adventure to go and find the dragon. And he has to become a thief in order to manage it. Well, that's pretty weird. You know, it's like, well, it's, it's because as a good citizen, he's just not enough to conquer a dragon. He has to also become a bad citizen in some sense. He has to incorporate the part of himself that's monstrous, let's say, and develop that and hone it. And, and that's to say that, well, if you're harmless, you're not virtuous. You're just harmless. You're like a rabbit. A rabbit isn't virtuous. It's just, it just can't do anything except get eaten. It's not virtuous. If you're a monster and you don't act monstrously, then you're virtuous. But you also have to be a monster. Well, you see this all the time. Harry Potter's like that too. It's like he's, he's flawed, he's hurt, he's got evil in him. He can talk to snakes, man. He breaks rules all the time. All the time. He's not at obedient at all. But, you know, he has a good reason for breaking the rules. And, it, and if he couldn't break the rules, him and his little clique of rule-breaking, you know, troublemakers, if they didn't break the rules, they wouldn't attain the highest goal. So it's very peculiar, but it's, it's very, very, it's a very, 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 very common mythological notion. You know, the hero has to be, the hero has to be a monster, but a controlled monster. Batman is like that, you know, I mean, it's, it's everywhere. It's, it's, it's the story you always hear. Well, that, that's a good, that's a good question, you know, because one question is, you know, you're kind of implicitly moral insofar as you're socialized. But that's sort of procedural, it's just built into you. This is different, this is also becoming conscious of it and expanding out your personality into dimensions that it wouldn't normally occupy. So this happens to people all the time. So for example, lots of my clients, my clinical clients are too agreeable. And um, they're generally women because women are more agreeable than men, but not always, because I've had agreeable men as clients as well. And what happens is they, they're resentful and, and they don't know how to stand up for themselves. And it's because they're very compassionate by nature. And so if you're entering into a negotiation with them, they'll let you win. Well, that's not so good because, you know, you need to win too. Especially if you're in an organization of adults where there's, there's a struggle, right? With, when you have kids, you can let them win especially infants, You're like you have to let them win, and that's partly why compassion is so necessary. But as a, as a basis for negotiation between adults, it's like, sorry, it's, it's insufficient. You have, to, you have to be a bit of a monster so that you can say no. And so a lot of what you do in, in psychotherapy is treat people's anxiety and depression. That's a huge chunk of it. Help them straighten out the way they think. That's a huge chunk of it. But another chunk of it is, well, let's toughen you up. You know, let's put you in a position where you can bargain. Let's teach you how to assert yourself and stand up for yourself. And that's assertiveness training. And it's a huge chunk of psychotherapy. And you need to, you need to learn it. It's like, because part of how you regulate your interactions with other people is to negotiate. And you cannot negotiate unless you can say no. You can't do it. And it causes conflict to say no, and if you don't like conflict, which is basically the definition of being agreeable, then you can't tolerate the conflict, and so then you can't negotiate on your own behalf, and so then you keep losing, and you're bullied, and you know, it's, it's not good. Then you get resentful, and, and it's really not good. So you have to develop your inner monster a little bit. And, and then that makes you a better person, not a worse person. It's weird, it's weird, but but not only understand it, but to, then to bring it under your control. You see, because there's a big difference between someone who's naive and is a good person. 
they're naive, they're a good person because they can't not be. They, they don't even have the capacity to be bad. So there's no morality in that. The morality comes when you're a monster and you can control it. 